Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm a massive fan of the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach. It's just a fantastic way of teaching the children so that they really spot the structures beneath the maths and especially when they're moving over to more formal methods, it's a really good bridge, a good way of connection making. And children absolutely love it because they're busy and they're active and it just helps them remember more. So this is my fourth video in my series, please check out my other ones if you haven't already. And in this video I'm going to focus on the method of short division and I'm going to look at how this approach can be used when you're introducing it. And um, I'm going to start actually with a sharing model, so I'm going to show you some short division using this approach using a sharing model and then I'm going to go right through and then look at perhaps some harder questions which lend themselves more to using a grouping model of division. I hope you find it useful. Here are the national curriculum objectives for teaching short division in England. And you'll notice that in year four, it isn't actually in the objectives, but it is in the non-statutory guidance. So it is worth thinking about bringing in this formal method in year four. In year five, they use the formal method by dividing numbers up to four digits by one digit and interpreting remainders appropriately. And by the time they get to year six, they divide up to four digit numbers by a two digit number using the formal method of short division where appropriate because in year six they are also taught the long division method. In both five and six they have to interpret the remainders appropriately or according to the context. Build it, draw it, write it, say it, what's the point? Well, it gives children a real concrete experience and this actually enables them to see the structure of the division and understand what's actually going on before they move to that abstract method all on its own. It provides a scaffold because they're learning something new so it's, it gives them a chance to practice through the build and the draw and it really helps support their memory retrieval. It makes connections with previous learning because it's active like the maths they've done in Key Stage 1 and because they capture the draw of the build that they've done in their maths book, it does support the idea of their maths book being a revision guide. They can look back to see what they've done. And because it's so visual, there's loads of reasoning activities. This is an example of a template that you could use in the classroom to support the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach. If you make it in card and laminate it and perhaps do it A3 for pair work or group work, then what this does is structure the learning through the week. Now I'll always start with a build, but this is a flexible model, so you can do a build it and write it at the same time like I'm going to do today. You can do a build it to draw it and then to a write it. It really doesn't matter, it just depends on the needs of your children and what you think they'd benefit from. The say it will come all the way through the week, so it's really important to encourage them to use the maths language you want them to use. I just wanted to share this amazing website, MathSpot, so if you're trying to model the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach from the front of the classroom and you're struggling with all the bits in your hand, then this fantastic website has a whole range of virtual manipulatives that are really useful for demonstrating the maths ideas to the, to the whole class so that they can all see. So this one's called MathSpot and there is another great website too called Toy Theatre, but I really recommend them. Let's start with the build. And actually for division, I like to do the build it and the write it at the same time because I think it's really helpful for children to see the connection with the build and what it actually looks like in that written method. So we've got 63 and we're dividing by three. And for these sorts of numbers, and this is, I would say, year four for primary schools in England, for these sorts of numbers, we're going to be using a sharing model to support the understanding that children have had in key stage one and also because it's manageable because the numbers are still quite small. So we're doing 63 things, for example, cakes, share between three people. So I'm going to draw three lines. And you can see by here I've made my 63 with place value counters. And now I'm going to share them equally between the three. Now this is a big step for children because this is the first time that they've actually started on the left of a calculation and moved over to the right. They're much more used to starting in the ones column than they are the tens column. So you may have to do quite a lot of modeling around this. So now I'm gonna share 
those tens equally between the three. And then I'm going to ask the question, how many tens have they got? Each person has got two tens. And I can put the tens and ones at the top there if I want to. Now I'm going to share my ones equally between three. How many ones has each person got? They have one one. So 63 shared equally between three people means they get 21 each. So it's really quite straightforward and a really good visual. So you might just start for a couple of days just doing the build in the right together and then very straightforward the draw as you can appreciate. The draw for place value counters I would keep exactly the same frame. I think it's useful and children could draw the place value counters in. You could also use base 10 in which case your representation would look like that. So the draw really must match what they've actually been doing in class. So I think Dean's or base 10 and place value counters are absolutely fantastic for that. The language that we can use and the language we can teach, we could use the following. So we just want to emphasize the sharing equally at this stage. We could also use words like divisor, dividend and quotient. And your three here is your divisor. Your dividend is how many you've got all together and your quotient is your answer of 21. We ask questions like how many tens each and how many ones each for this, just to make sure we're not getting the answer of just two here and that children appreciate that that two represents two tens. Let's make it a little bit harder. So once again, this is year four expectation. So we've got 48 and we're going to share it equally between three people. So just like we did before, to keep the model consistent, we can draw our three rows to put our place value counters on. We have made 48 and now we're going to share the 48 equally amongst the three people. So once again, we start with our tens and we share them equally. But look, we have one ten remaining. And we can't share that equally in the form that it's in. So we're going to do some exchanging. And we're going to exchange one of those tens for ten ones. And we're going to show what we've done up here. So there's our one ten. And now let's write our exchange in. Ten of those ones. So tens and ones, we have eighteen ones. Now we're going to share equally our 18 ones. And at this stage, it might very much be, wrong column, <laughs> this stage it might very well be that children have to go one at a time. There may be some children who appreciate that they can actually move more than one one. But the answer will be, I'm not gonna go right to the end, you get the drift, 16. You'll have, each person will have 16 in total if you share 48 between three people. This is an example of what the draw it might look like for the question we've just built, 48 divided by 3. So some children may benefit from drawing out the 48 first and recognising we've got four tens and eight ones. And if they do need to do that, then they can cross it off as they go along once they put it into the grid. Some children really do benefit from that, but for others it makes it a really long process. So I do try and refine it to this kind of approach as soon as possible. So what I would do here is I'd probably get the children to talk out loud as they put it out. So I've got my four tens and I'm sharing it equally between three. So I might go 10, 20, 30, 40. We might say that 40 out loud so it matches that. And then we would talk about how we can't share that equally in the form that it's in. So we need to exchange. But I think that it really captures the build really well. And children looking back in their maths books, say next term to see short division again, could look at this and it would trigger their memory, which is really important. Getting a little bit harder again, we've got a three digit number, but also this time we're gonna have a remainder at the very end on the ones column. And this kind of question doesn't really come in until year five in primary schools in England, because it's then that they have to use short division with remainders. So I would still advocate doing the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach, even though the numbers are getting bigger. 
So once again, you can see I've made my build here. And because I'm dividing by four, I'm going to draw four lines. And I'm going to start in the hundreds column and share my hundreds. How many hundreds has each person got? They have 100. Next to the tens column, I'm going to share them equally. How many tens has each person got? They have two tens. And finally, I go to my ones column and I share out my ones. And you will notice that for this question, I've actually only concentrated on a remainder being in the ones digit. I've kept the rest of the question quite straightforward so that we can actually really make sure they understand this remainder. And here it is. We can see that we have one, one for each person and there are three remaining. To do the draw for this model, I would simply replace the place value counters with a diagram and I would draw them on. And you could do that as well with base 10. This is the kind of question that children will do in year five in primary schools in England, because they have to divide a four digit number by a single digit divisor. So when we get to this kind of numbers, hopefully the children will have had lots of build it, draw it, write it, say it, using the sharing model, and it should have really benefited their understanding of what they were doing. But when we get to numbers this big, and when the divisor starts getting bigger, although it will stay a single digit, it gets increasingly difficult to share the numbers and have enough space to do so. And it's at this stage, really, we want to bring in a different model for working with this short division, and that is the grouping model. Now, children have had lots of experience with grouping models. They start in year two to do grouping for division, but also when you think about times tables, that's groups of numbers. So with, when we're thinking about 6,393 divided by three, we're thinking about threes, threes, threes. How many threes are there in 6,393? So I'm gonna show you a example of a grouping model. I've kept the numbers relatively straightforward for this first example, so you can see what I'm good going to do and then we'll do a slightly harder one. So another thing to say is that I often then get to the stage where perhaps build it gets a bit busy too. So it might be the stage to think about perhaps relying on a draw because the children could do uh, one or two examples of a build. You could demonstrate a build on the board using MathSpot or Toy Theatre but actually they're capturing more in their maths books at this age so I'd probably be thinking about getting to the draw quite quickly. And you'll notice my draw does look a little bit different. What I've decided to do is represent it within the division sign instead of in a table outside it. So let's start. So we start in our thousands column and we want to see how many groups of three we have got. Now, usually children are used to grouping into threes things that are worth one. So they might have six counters and they put them into threes. Each counter is worth one. The maths principle is the same, it's just that these counters are worth a lot more, but we can still put them into threes. And we can ask how many groups of three have we got? We have two groups of three. Next we go to our hundreds column and we do the same. We have one group of three. To our tens. Now of course we can arrange our grouping in any way we like. We have three groups of three and we have one group of three. So actually using it as a model, it is very straightforward and children can pick this up really quickly. It's not perfect, however, and you might have spotted it yourself. The bit that I'm not too keen on is the fact that when I'm saying how many groups of three and I'm writing two, that two is in the thousands column and individually we're representing, but we're not seeing 2,131 anywhere. So that's my issue. However, over the years, I've just kind of thought it through so many times. And what you notice if you're a year five or six teacher, you'll, you'll hear the children saying, how many threes in six, two? How many threes in three, one? That's what a lot of children end up saying. Well, this is more similar to this idea. And we can just, you know, take them back to understand that these are thousands by actually drawing them out. So that's how I would represent 6,393 divided by 3 using a grouping model. 
So this question is a bit more tricky than the last one. We've still got our four digit dividend by a single digit divisor, but in this example, there's going to be some exchanging and there will be a remainder. So uh, once again, I think I'd probably do a very small amount on the build. I perhaps would model using MathSpot or Toy Theatre from the front, maybe let the children do one together in pairs, and then I would move to the draw. And for this question, I've actually drawn it using a representation of base 10 or Dean's. Just be, to mix it up really, because I've talked about it but not shown it. I know what some of you are thinking though, you're probably thinking, I'm not going to ask my children to draw that in the thousands column, the cube. So, you know, if, you, if you're finding the thousands are an issue, just go back to place value counters for the draw. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to use a grouping model and we are going to group into sevens. So we start with our thousands column. I've got eight thousands. So I can put them in one group of seven. But I have some remaining. So I need to exchange that into the hundreds column. And I will draw in the ten hundreds that I have exchanged it for. Bit of a squash. And I will show that now on my calculation. I've got 14 hundreds. Yes, I have. I've got 14 hundreds. So now I'm going to put them into groups of seven. I've got one group of seven. I've got two groups of seven. Next to my tens column, I've got eight tens and I need to put them into a group of seven. I have one group of seven. And I have one ten remaining. So I'm going to exchange that into the ones column. And I will show that here in my compact form. So now I have 11 ones and I need to put them into a group of seven. I have one group of seven and I have four remaining. I've squashed it in a bit there, apologies, but four remaining. So in year five, they have to be able to represent um, questions and show a remainder and if they were asked to represent it as a fraction remainder then it would simply be 1211 and four sevenths so our denominator in our fraction remainder is always our divisor so once your children have had lots of practice of building it and drawing it you'll find that they'll be able to go straight to that compact method and work efficiently when they get into year six, they need to divide up to a four-digit dividend by a two-digit divisor. And by the time they're looking at two-digit numbers, they're often doing their times tables and using their times table knowledge to work it out, which doesn't fit with the same model. So I would be looking at doing um, teaching through the times tables to do a two-digit divisor. That's how I would use a build it, draw it, write it, say it approach for teaching short division. I hope you found it useful. Please like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos that I've got. For more maths fun, please head over to my Facebook page, Curious Maths. Thanks for watching.